several years now, China has had uh, preferential pricing policies in place to promote wind energy and other sources of renewables. Um, but it's only uh, now that they're starting to look at preferential pricing policies for solar photovoltaics. Uh, and they're under uh, discussions for a feed-in tariff for these technologies, which will potentially mean a uh, much broader deployment of solar within China. Um, I think that China, the Chinese government is realizing that uh, they've become this leader in manufacturing this technology, and yet they're not really taking advantage of the potential greenhouse gas reductions this technology provides. I have no doubt that in 10 years from now, uh, China will be uh, a world leader in, in global renewable energy technology, and not just within their own borders, but you'll see Chinese uh, renewable energy technology being used around the world. Many Chinese manu uh, solar uh, manufacturers are talking about one yuan, that's about 14 or 15 US cents per kilowatt hour solar PV pricing in by you know end of this year or next year. So we're beginning to see a dramatic decrease because, you know, China produces about 35 to 40 percent of the solar PV globally. Over 95 percent of that product is already exported to U.S., to Europe and Japan. So I think the, the reduced cost of Chinese products, you know, it's uh, driving the installations in other countries. I think in the process, uh, the developers paying a lower price for their, you know, uh, for the purchase. And also in the process, you have green jobs created for installing those uh, solar PV projects. So I think for solar to be competitive, you need to do two things, and scale of economy, reduce the cost of solar itself uh, by creating a stable and sizable market demand. And on the other hand, you need to sort of uh, get the price right for fossil fuels, you know, internalize the externalities on, on, on environment and public health. When it comes to jobs in renewable energy technologies, or green jobs as we often call them, there's the manufacturing jobs and then there's the installation jobs. Uh, the manufacturing, of course, can, can technically take place anywhere in the world, um, but the installation has to take place at the site where the technology is being deployed. Uh, so even if we have solar panels being manufactured in China or in Malaysia or in Vietnam, um, if the United States is deploying solar technology, we're going to need people in the United States to actually install these panels on people's rooftops, on the rooftops of large industrial buildings, in central power stations in the desert, um, and these are all going to require U.S. jobs. If you look at installation side of, side of the solar value chain, actually 60 to 70 percent of all solar jobs are in the system design and installation. So. Wherever the end market is, it, it certainly has a, a very positive impact in terms of job growth. What we have seen in many of the end markets where there, are, where there is significant demand for solar is that there are a number of companies um, growing at all levels of the value chain. Once they have developed that capability, as soon as new markets begin, they can actually export that talent uh, to those different markets. Um, so it's really key for uh, policymakers to consider the impact not just of job creation within its own market, but also the potential to, to get ahead of innovation and, and develop new and better uh, solar systems and technologies that can be then exported to the rest of the industry. Well, 来减缓我们的温室效应。